Today is Sunday, April 14th. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jan Carabello. And I'm Howard Monroe. Thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday morning. Let's get right over to meteorologist Timmy Sousa, who is looking at your next weather forecast. It's going to be a warm one today. It'll be a warm one, yes. and it will be a sunny one. A little bit of a breeze out there, but not too bad. We are in store for a delightful Sunday. Uh, let's go ahead and go to Cape May, because you know what? Last hour, we captured a hang glider in this shot, just out of the blue, just soared past the camera. Not so lucky right now. I was hoping we get another second bite of the apple. There'd be another one walking by, but we at least have a person down there in a bright color uh, jacket enjoying what is a beautiful day down the shore. Now, here in the city, we're looking at equally beautiful conditions. So if you're out and about, you're going to church, you're walking the dog, you're having brunch, you just want to take a stroll, whatever. It is lovely in Center City. There is no rain. It is already very, very mild out there. We are going to be sunny, warm, a little bit breezy today, not windy like yesterday. Uh, we are going to see storms late tonight. A lot of those are going to remain north and west of the city. The main threat will be wind. So if they make it to the city and they're at least gusty, that is what we're going to be dealing with. 52 right now in Philadelphia, 53 in Atlantic City. It's 46 in Allentown and 54 for all of you in Dover. Clear skies. Take a look at this. Satellite and radar shows nothing right now, but the storm that will swing through tonight, it is making its way through the Great Lakes, and there's a warm front that will lift through, taking us to the 70s before the cold front approaches later tonight, triggering showers and storms. So the low and mid 70s today with lots of sunshine out there. It will be breezy at times this afternoon, and then it will be later tonight, sometime between about 10 and midnight, that we see the potential of thunderstorms. We'll talk about those more when I come back in a few minutes. Jan? All right, Tammy, thanks so much. To our top headlines now, Philadelphia police say a person of interest is in custody, accused of stabbing a one-year-old boy and another woman in two separate random attacks. They say a mother and father were pushing their twins in a stroller past the temple Beth Zion, Beth Israel, on South 18th Street near Rittenhouse Square yesterday when a woman with a long knife ran up to them and stabbed the child in the arm. They believe the same suspect stabbed a 24-year-old woman earlier that morning in Center City. People we spoke to are frightened to learn about these random attacks. Kind of shocked to know that somebody like this is walking around just right next to us. A shock, but, but not total surprise, given the craziness in the city. The child is now in the hospital in stable condition, and the woman is recovering at home. Police say the female suspect is wanted for aggravated assault in New York City. President Biden is planning to meet with G7 leaders today to coordinate a diplomatic response to Iran's historic attack on Israel as concerns of further escalation continue to grow. Iran launched more than 300 projectiles into Israeli territory in response to an airstrike on an Iranian consulate. It killed seven military members. That happened earlier this month. Israel says it intercepted 99% of Iran's drones and missiles with the help of the United States and other allies. Iran's embassy to the UN is now warning Israel and the United States against further action. There is a significant potential for an escalation into a broader uh, regional conflict. Iran's attack marks a dramatic escalation after decades of tensions between the two nations. We'll have a live report coming up in our next half hour as we continue to track the latest developments. Philadelphia Mayor Sherelle Parker continues to push to clean up the city as part of her 100-day action plan. The mayor led a walking tour in the Woodland Avenue Business Corridor in southwest Philly yesterday. This was the second of 10 tours Mayor Parker has planned that include hot spots for illegal dumping. The mayor says that she wants to turn places like this into cleaner spaces where businesses can thrive. So you had l &I out here, you had sanitation out here, you had streets, parks and rec, commerce, PPA and the police working together. Her presence is telling the community and people all around the world for that matter how she cares. The mayor recently toured Kensington. She says that fixing the issues will take some time, but says that this is an important step to begin changes. Friends and family of a cyclist are honoring his memory this weekend. The cyclist died during a hit and run while he was riding in FDR Park. Our Ray Strickland shows us how that family is now trying to make streets safer for people on bikes. 
On a chilly and windy afternoon in Philadelphia, the family of Mario Diadamo came together to mourn his death on what would have been his 38th birthday. He was a light. Everybody, he loved the tease. He loved to be so, he was vibrant. The Philadelphia attorney was killed on August 4th, 2023 in what police call an attempted hit and run while he was riding his bike in the bike lane at FDR Park. And that was the saddest day of my life. The saddest day of my life. Authorities say the driver tried to get away but crashed. 67 year old Thomas Ford of Philadelphia now facing several charges, including homicide by vehicle while driving under the influence. But our hearts are broken. Diadamo's friends and loved ones joined his family in the very place he was struck. A ghost bike was placed there in his honor. He loved this park. He would come here almost daily after work, either ride his bike, jog. The Bicycle Coalition of Greater Philadelphia has been working with Diadamo's family, calling his death a reminder of the need to make the roads safer. We need real safety road design. We need protected, connected bike lanes. Um, we need parking protected bike lanes. And while the family tries to heal, they're hoping the driver accused of killing him is held accountable for leaving a hole that can never be filled. I want to see him. I want to hug him. And I just, just want him to be here with me. And the family of Mario Diadamo believes what happened to him could have been prevented. So the family, as well as the Bicycle Coalition of Greater Philadelphia, continue to push the city to do more to protect bicyclists. Reporting at FDR Park, Ray Strickland, CBS News, Philadelphia. An investigation is now underway after a tragic accident on a Montgomery County golf course. Cheltenham Township Police say a large tree fell on a moving golf cart yesterday at the J.C. Melrose Country Club on Tookany Creek Parkway. The passenger in that golf cart died when the tree fell on that cart. The driver was not seriously hurt. In Mercer County, New Jersey, an inclusive baseball league for athletes with special needs has reason for celebratory fun on the field. Last year, a tornado damaged the field for the Miracle League of Mercer County. It's based in Hamilton Township. The league has been raising money ever since to pay for the repairs. Now, thanks to the Mercer County Investment Initiative, they have received $92,000. Certainly a big reason for them to celebrate. And happening today, take a trip to Japan and welcome spring without hopping on a plane. The Philadelphia Cherry Blossom Festival, it continues today. CBS News Philadelphia's Ross Timote is joining us live now from the Shofusu Japanese Cultural Center in West Fairmont Park. Ross, good morning to you. Good morning to you guys. We have made our way over to the food culinary area of the uh, Cherry Blossom Festival. You guys know this is where I thrive. And we've got a special guest joining me right now, Pat Daly, the owner of Maido, uh, the authentic Japanese marketplace. Do I got that? Yep. Description drip that, down? That is correct. Yep. Okay. Mindo. And where are you guys located? In Ardmore, Pennsylvania. So they're normally in Ardmore, but this weekend, obviously, they're here in, uh, you know, in Fairmount Park for uh, the Cherry Blossom Festival. So Indeed. you've been a big seller. You sold out most of your items yesterday. Yeah. What are you offering and, and what are the big sellers? Uh, the big sellers here are, uh, it's called Onigiri. It's sort of a, um, a Japanese twist on a sandwich. It's, it's a rice ball with a protein wrapped in nori. It's what the samurai used. Um, Hundreds of years ago, when they would uh, travel to to a fight, and because it's extremely healthy and the energy content is really good, um, so we sold out of all of them yesterday. But we have more than a thousand coming again today. So uh, we go through somewhere between a thousand and fifteen hundred every day. So even the food items here are steeped in Japanese tradition, and Very much. you've also uh, brought out some of the Japanese drinks that you yeah, offer. The, um, the drinks that we have, uh, all the snacks that we have, come from Japan. Uh, so they're they're English labeled, but they're very colorful packages, uh, really delicious. Not too sweet, but but kids really really like them, and it's all snack food you can walk around with. And I imagine you're opening a lot of kids and adults' eyes and taste buds to new flavors directly from Japan. Can you just tell our viewers what that's like watching people's kind of eyes open as it dawns uh, on them, like some of the different flavors that they've never experienced? It, it is funny, especially in our store, when you see a kid munching on something and a mom will say, what are you eating? What are you eating? And he says, oh, it's good, mom. And you know, It's seaweed and, and it's <laughs> it's uh, cooked fish and whatever, but he's just really enjoying it. So it's, it's quite amusing to see it happen, a blonde-haired, blue-eyed kid. <laughs> 
just really chomping down on Japanese food. And that's how you went over new customers with some delicious yeah. food, right? Yeah. All right, Pat, thanks so much. Uh, good luck today with your sales. Yeah. I'm sure you don't need it, but uh, yeah. check them out. Where again is, this, is the marketplace? In Ardmore, Pennsylvania. This year we have a new Godzilla mugshot <laughs> t-shirt. Come on and get it. One of a kind. <laughs> how about that t-shirt, guys? Not only is he selling food and drinks, he's also got the uh, Godzilla mugshot t-shirt. That's a keeper. We'll send it back to you. Ross, what have you eaten? I haven't uh, hardly eaten anything. I had the Kit Kat, though, from before, guys, just to follow up on that. It was actually delicious. I thought I was getting set up for, like, some sort of uh, Japanese uh, sneak attack, but no, it was absolutely delicious. Ross, why would we set you up for something? For failure? <laughs> why would we do that? I... I uh, well, I think I kind of lend myself to being set up sometimes, but not today. I was on my guard. I very uh, gingerly b bit into it, but then I was like, this is delicious. It almost tastes like white chocolate. It was so good. But it actually had sake in it, which was fantastic. There yeah, we go. they had so many. Like I said, they have green tea. They have strawberry shortcake. They have wasabi. Yeah. So there's a lot a lot of different flavors out there. That they don't sell in the United States. That you got to go there to get them. All right, Ross, thank you very much.